Hello! Kent, how's it going? <laughs> going great. I had to switch to Chrome. I use Brave normally, and I don't know. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. But no I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. I am thrilled to have you. Thank you so much for the $500 donation. Um, so, so kind, so generous. I really appreciate your time. And then on top of that, the the, the, the donation. Thank you so much. It's great to meet you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you're the one doing all the work here. Um, I, I'm just happy to have this opportunity to have somebody match my donation. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that, that's 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 the win-win, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, so you wanted to come and talk to us about the power of form. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so forms are really powerful in what they can do for the web, like by out of out of the box by default. So cool. Um, for a lot of people who've been entering the web development world in the last five years or maybe maybe seven years, um, they've learned forms as just basically um, I, I add an on submit and that, that takes an event and then I call prevent default and then I can do my thing with my form. Um, and, and there are reasons that we do this is because like we don't want to have a full page refresh and we don't want to uh, like we want to show some loading state or, or something um, and pre preserve our focus and everything. But like, the, is it uh, um, the, the there are a number of problems that we come across with this, and I've got some demos and stuff that I can show you. But um, awesome, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting that forms out of the box have a lot of really cool aspects to them that I think that uh, we can take advantage of um, if we just build our applications in a, a certain way, specifically using Remix. But um, yeah, but yeah, like my my hope is to inspire people a little bit to um like based on how remix works uh to maybe do the same thing in in their own apps so awesome um so you want to share your screen yeah yeah let's cool. do that um, the little button at the bottom should allow you to do that let me know if you have any trouble with that oh yeah and because i don't use uh chrome normally it's asking me to give permission to chrome <laughs> so okay don't worry. one second let me no let me worries. get that and it says I need to quit and reopen, but I don't think I actually do. So I'm not going to. It's, is it one of those things where it's like, this application has been installed. Now, please restart. And you're like, I'm not going to do that. And then it yeah, just works no anyway. Way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so let's see. Are you seeing my screen? I'm not seeing it in the little thing okay, yet. You might actually, it, it might. Maybe might I do need to bluff. restart. Yeah, it might be calling your bluff. It's, it's all good. Um, I will uh, just switch back and you can I'll come back right in back. a sec. Cool. Cool chat, uh, Adam. Thank you so much for that donation. Really appreciate uh, another fifty bucks from you. Um, we're we're getting there, chat. Chat. We're gonna do it. We are going to get to this goal. Look how nice and blue that ocean is. It's just really satisfying. Um, I'm, I'm I'm so excited. I'm just I'm thrilled this is happening. All right, bringing in Kent again. All right, so you're back right. in. Sweet. And I'm sharing my screen now. And so I'm going to go to that? that. Here we go. Two count. Oop, I went to the wrong one. Give me one sec. <laughs> the, the, the snow animation uh, is amazing, but uh, if if I click the wrong thing, it, it, it can be a cruel mistress. There we go. So <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Sweet. So, oh, you know what? I should have been on um, on the site. There we go. Bum -ba -da -dum. So appreciate this it. Is, I appreciate this is what it. We've got. So everybody go donate to Team C's right now. That's we awesome. are actually, uh, from what, I, I can't actually see everything because my screen is blocking it, but it looks like we're doing really well on the goal. So that's we're awesome. We're just about at 7,000. So yeah, we're like 70% there. And yeah. you, my friend, are the halfway point of the guests. So I, it's it's Woo! looking good. It's looking yeah. good. I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, and I noticed the question marks on my my comment for my donation. I think those were claps. So I don't know what happened there. Those were emoji. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we we did not prepare for emojis or team C. I'm not sure <laughs> one or the other. Probably it's probably me. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you're good. So um, anyway, this this is a pretty simple app. We have uh, just this ability for you to add uh, your name to this list of people who are committing to donate Ooh. to Team C's. And so I, I have donated, so I'll add my name. And that um, pops up right there, and, and now it's it's uh, in the list. This is not published anywhere because I don't want to moderate user submitted data. <laughs> it's, it's really so, smart. You've done this yeah, before. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> People can be jokesters and also really inappropriate, too. Yes. So. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's a pretty, pretty simple way that this is structured. Um, 
And if we um, take a look at the the network tab of what happens when I, I submit Could you make form, it a little bit bigger? Just uh, yes. the, the network tab specifically. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if I wanted to submit Cody, for example, that's Cody the koala right here. Nice. Um, <laughs> then um, when I commit, then I get this post request. So this this is a fetch request uh, that's that's being made. So it's like your your typical thing that we do in our spas and our, our JavaScript heavy applications. So we don't get a full page refresh and everything, which is right. what the form does by default, um, which is why we prevent the default. Um, <laughs> And so immediately after that, we, we go and get the um, all of the committers. So we make sure we have our, our um, data up to date and everything like that and, and all of that stuff. So that's what's going on. Um, but the, the interesting thing is what happens. Well, here, let me take a step back. Uh, this is using the remix form. And I'll show you the code for that here in a second. But I'm going to go to this client only route. Um, and it's the exact same stuff on here. And it works exactly the same as well. We're still making this post and, and going to get all the data and all that that stuff. Um, but what's interesting is how these two differ in the way that they work and what impact that has on the user experience. Okay. And so let me just show you the, the client only form here really quick. Um, here is our form right here. We've got our label and input and our um, submit button and all that stuff as well as error handling and that sort of thing. Cool. Um, and then our handle submit, this is our on submit for the form. Um, we're grabbing the committer from that, uh, that form field. We're making sure that it's a string and everything. Um, and then we make our fetch request. And when that fetch request is done, then uh, I trigger Remix to go and, and get all the data refreshed and everything. So this is like some of the stuff that Remix is doing under the hood, okay. just done kind of in the more traditional way that we've always been doing forms for the last, you know, uh, six or seven years um, for cool. client side apps. So, um, I mean, there and there are, of course, a number of problems here, like race conditions and a bunch of other things that you don't have to worry about when you're using Remix, but we do when we have to think about this sort of thing. But um, the the biggest thing that I want to call out and and why we're talking about the power of forms today is that when you do things this way, you miss out on a lot of the things that forms do you do for you automatically. So. One example is what happens if the JavaScript fails to load? So you can actually disable JavaScript uh, in your dev tools here. And so if I refresh, then every, everything loads except for the JavaScript. That's, that's what that feature in the dev tools does for you. And so you can kind of simulate what happens if the user has JavaScript disabled, because you can do that for security reasons. That's not very common, but it is. it does happen. Right. Uh, what's more common is the JavaScript fails to load for some reason. Um, maybe you got the, the hash wrong or something, like the build got messed up. Or um, maybe the user is going, uh, it has a spotty internet connection. And so everything else loaded, but the JavaScript failed to load. There, there are a lot right. of reasons that JavaScript can fail to load. And so in that situation, if I added like Marty right here uh, and I uh, hit Enter, then what actually happens is I get a full page refresh and we get a get request with my form serialized as part of the URL. Huh. And that's that's the default behavior. When we say event prevent default, that's what right. we're preventing is this full page refresh um, where the, the form is serialized into the URL. So, I mean, we can, we can change this a little bit. We could say, hey, instead of rendering my form um, with an on submit, we can actually also say, uh, method is post instead of a get. And when we do that, and our JavaScript is still disabled here on in the browser. Uh, I mean, I, I just wrote JavaScript that's running on the server. Uh, so it all, all renders on the server, it comes up here to the browser, and it doesn't hydrate. Um, and so if I do that, then I'm going to get, well, it, everything breaks because we're doing a post to the server, and the server doesn't know what to do with it now because <laughs> I messed it up. But, uh, but, instead of getting the form serialized and put into the URL, we're getting the form serialized and put into the payload of our post. Got it. Uh, I'll bump that up even further. So uh, you have your headers, your payload, and then the response preview and all of that stuff here. So forms by default, even without any JavaScript, they know how to take our uh, all of the inputs of our form, everything within that open form and that closing form, and uh, serialize it into something that it can actually send as a request to the backend. And then we can handle that uh, properly and, and do something with it. So um, that is uh, like an important thing to, to keep in mind that when you're calling this event prevent default and then doing all this extra work, what you're preventing 
is basically all the work that you're doing. <laughs> He's getting that for free is essentially. Yeah, what, yeah, exactly. It. Okay. We already have this, like this is already a thing. And so we're, we're turning off a feature of the browser and implementing it ourselves in JavaScript and we're doing worse than yeah. what the browser can do. And, and so here's, here's the mind blowing thing is that when, when you build your JavaScript to simply simulate the same thing that the, the browser does, then um, if your uh, JavaScript fails to load, then the browser does its thing and your app still works, okay? So here's what I mean by that. Here's what the, the actual working thing. If we go to the non-client only, uh, and so we're still not loading JavaScript here. And I say, let's say Mary is gonna commit. So we hit enter and everything works. Uh, even though the JavaScript's not there, we still do this post. It's been serialized uh, in the payload. And because I've, I've used Remix here and I'm um, using it the way that like you're supposed to, uh, <laughs> Remix will actually handle that post request. It will call all of my code to update the database or whatever I need to. And then it will render what I tell it to um, for uh, that, that next page that I told it to go to. So whether that be the same page or I could redirect the user to a different page um, and everything works. Like there's Mary right there. In yeah. The, did, in the did the page reload? Is that... Okay, yeah. I, 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 it, it happened so fast, I, I, I missed yeah, it, that's yeah. awesome. So we're gonna talk about happening so fast here in just a minute. Okay. Um, because sometimes it doesn't happen fast and this is actually why we really care about this. So okay. we don't necessarily care about um, when the JavaScript fails to load, that really doesn't happen very often, but it does, but, but not super often. What we're more interested in is what if the JavaScript takes a long time to load? So we're, we're, all, all of these frameworks are constantly trying to figure out how do we reduce the amount of time um, it takes to to get uh, to get our application on the page, uh, and the one of the number one ways to do that is to reduce how much JavaScript you're sending, cool. right? But what if you could make it so that you you can send the document, and then while the JavaScript is loading, your your app still works before the JavaScript is finished loading, and that's that's what this type of architecture can give us. We can rely on the form, the way that the forms work. And, and the way that uh, browsers use the form. And then we can progressively enhance that as the JavaScript loads in. So we can have a, a nicer experience for users when the JavaScript is loaded. But before the JavaScript's loaded, it actually still works. And that's what we're going for here. So because it's if using I, the web tech, right? Like it's yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, so if I enable JavaScript again, uh, now everything is working and, and, um, and it's nice and fast and whatever. But if I turn on uh, slow 3G, and actually let's do it this way. Let's say that I'm on a, a really slow connection. Um, I, I've disabled the cache. So this is the first time ever ever coming. I'm, I'm on Twitter on a slow connection. Somebody shared this link that I could commit myself to donate to Teen Seas, and I click on it. So here's what happens. I go, uh, go there and I'm waiting and I'm seeing some sort of feedback here. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Yeah, my name is Matt and I'm gonna submit and my JavaScript was still loading when I submitted that, but I'm still seeing this loading indicator. So like, I'm still getting feedback that the application cares about me and is doing something <laughs> and it worked. So I don't have to wait for the JavaScript to load for my app to actually be functional. And so now like, it still matters that we don't send a silly amount of JavaScript to the browser, but it matters a little bit less, right? Yeah, because well, yeah. you can use it. And, and even like, you know, sl slow 3G, people are on slower connections than that. So it's yeah. it's important that they can access things and uh, make it work even if the, the they shouldn't have to wait another few minutes for JavaScript because sometimes even if it's a small bundle, the connection is just not great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Even, yeah, you can, you can make it so that you have just like the tiniest bit of JavaScript, but even if that takes a long time to load, then you're, you're still kind of stuck. Now, That's of awesome. course, there, there's only so much you can do about those really slow connections where even the HTML from the document takes a long time to load. So even getting the form on the page. Right. But um, yeah, you're right. If it is a super slow connection and I have to wait 10 whole seconds for that HTML to get there, it sure would be nice if I didn't have to wait an additional 20 seconds for the JavaScript to get there. Because I've got the form and the form knows how to serialize the data and send it to my backend. Yeah, so the time and, to responsive is pretty much the same as like the first initial paint or kind of a, around there, is that? Yeah, yeah. As soon as soon as the browser has painted, you can instantly start using forms and, and things. Awesome. Now, like there are some things that you can um, that we build as JavaScript engineers that you can't 
um, do without JavaScript. Like there are some accessible UIs, there are like modals and dropdowns and, and you know custom uh, dropdowns and stuff like that. That like you have to wait for the JavaScript to load for some of this stuff. But if I can get like 90% of my app working without having to wait for the JavaScript to load, by golly, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And and so uh, so that's that's what we can do. I want to show you the code really quick, and then uh, I, I know my time is coming up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that sounds so grave the way you put yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my time on this earth is very brief. You know, Christmas Carol. Um, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is the way that this works uh, in Remix. We have this route module. It's in app routes commitments .tsx. Cool. And um, I've got my uh, CSS that I'm listing that's on the page here. I've got how I get my data from my database right here. And then I have my action. So this is what happens when a form is submitted. And so I can get the form data. This is all platform APIs. Form data is something you'll learn about on MDN. So it's not a Remix API. It's it's a platform API. Awesome. So we can get the committer from the form that was submitted and add that commitment and then redirect the user right back where they came from. Because um, we're just going to leave them right right on that page. We could redirect them to another you know profile page if we wanted to. But um, that that's all you need to do for uh, for the action. And that happens on the server. So the cool thing about this too is that and by building things this way, we can actually drastically reduce the amount of code we need on the client as well, because this is, we do all of our magic stuff on the server. And so um, not only will your app work before the JavaScript loads, but you're going to load less JavaScript because you have less work to do on the, on the client as well. Uh, so that's the, that's the server side. On the client, this is how we're, we're getting the data um, from our get, from the, the client to get all the committers. Uh, this is what happens when they're like there's an error or something. The action returns the error message, so that's what the action data is. Uh, we've got some stuff for optimistic UI. We can we probably don't have time to talk about, um, but uh, this is this is it. This is the entire form to make all of that stuff work. This is all you do. Wow. You say I have a form, and uh, its method is post, and here is the the elements of the form. That's it. You don't have any like use effects or uh, use state or any of that nonsense. You don't need it. And it all works with and without JavaScript. I don't think I'm going to miss it, honestly. I, I, yeah, I love right? the leaning on the web tech, letting the web do what it's designed to do, not fighting against it. Um, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, quick, quick question. is uh, When you say server side, is that a serverless function or... It can be any, so Remix runs anywhere. And okay. so um, my website is running in a, a node Docker container on fly.io distributed okay. in like a bunch of regions all over the world. Um, we can run on Netlify serverless functions, Vercel serverless functions, cool. and Cloudflare workers even. So we, we can we can go on the other side of the CDN and run before you even hit the CDN. And on that, we've actually gotten response times of 19 milliseconds. Um, so like you, I mean, wow. Maybe that you have is, a slow internet is, connection, but <laughs> that's instant. That is just instant. Yeah, yeah. Like the, there's it no is. other word for that. There's it's instant. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So this it's so cool. it's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. And let's say I'm still on this th slow 3G connection, but because JavaScript is now loaded and I have optimistic UI, I can make this look like it is instant as well by saying, uh, let's say, um, we'll have to wrap it after this. Just yeah, C's. And that looked instant, but the request is still happening. Oh, uh, nice. And so, so that's the like, optimistic UI, but you're talking And that's the about. optimistic UI cool. right here. And that's all it takes for that. It's it's pretty slick. Awesome. So just, just for chat, this was made with Remix. I see people are posting the, the docs in chat. Um, Kent, thank you so much for showing it to us. Let me um, actually bring this over here. There we go. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for your uh, generous donation. Really appreciate everything. Uh, it's great yeah, meeting you. Absolutely. We'll have to have you back to talk more Remix because I'm already yeah. like 18 minutes worth and I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> Let's okay. I'm seeing it. So thank you so much. Um, happy holidays, man. Likewise. Thanks, everybody. Donate to Team C's. Woo! Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> See ya. Bye.